secret White House immigration plan, which was exposed for its anti-immigrant, anti-family, and anti-worker provisions to the Bipartisan Strive Act, introduced by Representative Gutierrez and Flake. The communities who have put this event together share the belief that the Strive Act is a serious proposal that can be the starting point for discussion and formulation of a humane and just immigration reform bill. We are also clear that the White House plan is not acceptable. To discuss more about what is at stake and how we intend to further engage communities, today and in the months ahead, we have six national local leaders and impacted individuals who speak today. Our first speaker is Floyd Mori, the National Director of the Japanese American Citizens League. Floyd will discuss the historical and current context of the immigration debate. Thank you very much. The first thing uh, that we need to appreciate is that this is a very great country that we live in. I was born in a small dirt farm in a place called Sandy, Utah. Uh, my parents spoke little or no English, but yet they raised eight children. Eight children who became good citizens of this country. Uh, some who were elected officials, some were college professors, some are lawyers, some are bankers. Uh, these eight children did well by the instruction of my immigrant parents. They taught their children hard work, and they taught their children that education is very important. The organization which I represent, the Japanese American Citizens League, or JACL, was organized by some young adults and immigrants who were contemporaries of my mom and dad almost 80 years ago. While making a place for themselves in this great nation, these people had to fight anti-Asian immigration laws. They fought for the ability to gain full citizenship in this great land of opportunity. Many were barred from owning land, owning land as alien land laws crept into the law books in this country. They couldn't play in the same playgrounds as other people. They couldn't work the jobs that they were trained to do. Most were thrown into prison during World War II and labeled as enemy aliens. This was done without allowing them any due process of law that was guaranteed by this, the Constitution of this country. Yet, my parents and other immigrants maintained their values of hard work and reverence of family. The American dream is based on this spirit of America that has been taught, brought here by immigrants from the beginning of this country. All immigrants are not perfect. I'm sure there are some in our histories that uh, maybe escaped the arm of the law in the country in which they came from. But most worked hard, earned money to bring family here. Immigrants have been the engine of power for the great economy that we have here in the United States. Those same traditions that made our country great then are values that make our country great today. Today, immigrants toil hard in factory assembly lines, on construction sites, in, leisure, in the leisure industry, in fields of agriculture, and in small businesses. They teach in our most prestigious universities, and have been entrepreneurs behind the development of the new age of technology. They have invested both monetary and human capital to make their American dream come true for their families. Some have been waiting for decades for the fulfillment of their dream, patiently waiting in line. But today we're hearing the same cries of 80 years ago, that immigrants are dangerous to our American way of life. The specter of fear, the seeds of mistrust are being sown as they were 80 years ago. That needs to stop here and now. Immigration is the lifeblood that made our nation great. Present immigration laws have not been serving our country well. New proposals are aimed at keeping families apart. This is not good for our nation. President Bush recognized the importance of comprehensive immigration reform when he said just one month ago, it is in our nation's interest to have a comprehensive immigration law 
so we can uphold the great values of America. It is time for Congress to pass a bill that preserves the great values of family and keeps families together. We need a bill that will assure continuing prosperity to this great nation. So when do we need comprehensive immigration reform? We now! need it now. Should families be part of this reform? Yes. Should I urge all of you as you go back to your various states and cities to urge your congressmen to support immigration reform that includes bringing families together. Thank you. One of the most consistent and long-standing champions in Congress for minority and people of color communities and immigrant communities has been Representative Jan Schakowsky from Illinois. We are very honored to have her with us today. Uh, please welcome her warmly. Thank you. It's such an honor to stand here with all of you today. All of you who have come today on the first day of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month to push for responsible and sensible immigration reform. Like so many Americans, I too am a first generation American. My parents came with their parents as when they were small children. My grandparents uh, lived in a neighborhood in Humboldt Park in Chicago and behind their house, what is now the garage, was the barn and my grandfather worked hard every day filling the wagon with vegetables and groceries and going down the alleys of Chicago lifting heavy bags of potatoes up the stairs and was able to make enough money to put his four children through college and to fulfill what everybody wants, the American dream, the best for their children, a good education. And I've been so happy to work in the Chicago area with uh, ICIRR, the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, organizations like the Asian Institute who have done such a fantastic job in promoting the interests of all immigrants. Um, and now this is the time. We have to do it now. We need comprehensive immigration reform. I, we need it before the fall of this year, and we are this close if we have your help. The elements are that we need to balance the need to welcome newcomers, secure our borders, from terrorists and respond to the needs of the estimated 12 million undocumented people who are here working hard, raising their families here in our country. I am a co-sponsor of the STRIVE Act, which Representative Gutierrez and Representative Flake and many others have in the, in the House of Representatives and which includes, by the way, the DREAM Act that would allow people who uh, deserve to go to college to get to college regardless of, and to change their immigration status. I want to make an important point. The legislation here is not amnesty. Amnesty is kind of a free ride. What it is is earned legalization. The people that would be eligible then to become citizens do pay a fine for having originally broken a regulation or perhaps a, a law. They get to the back of the line. They, they have to learn English. Um, and so it is, it is very different from just amnesty. It is earned legalization and we want to make sure that we use that, that word. And so we want to follow the great American traditions of opening our arms to people from all parts of the country, all parts of the world. My district is made up of 54% of the people are immigrants or children of immigrants. That is the strength of my district. That is not a weakness, that is a strength. And that is what has, has made our country great. And so I'm so glad that you're here right now to hopefully go talk to your members of Congress, make them understand this isn't just about one ethnic group. Many people think of this only as, uh, as immigrants from Mexico, and we welcome them as well, but it's from people all around the world. And your, faces, your faces and your voices are so important today. So thank you very much for being part of this struggle. 
of you who have signs, please join us here in the back of the, uh, join us here at the press conference and anyone else who'd like to join us, uh, participants. Our next speaker, we have Connie Yoon, a participant from Chicago. Connie recently graduated from one of the top art institutions in the country, but has faced harsh limitations because of her immigration status. Connie will speak about the need to continue to educate and advocate for the passage of the DREAM Act. My name's Connie, and I, I'm a volunteer for Korean American Resource and Cultural Center the Korea, uh, the Chicago Nakazak, and I graduated college last year. And I'm here to share my experiences as an undocumented student who went to college so that the decision makers and that every individual in this country would realize the importance and urgency of immigration reform and dream act. When I first came to the States, I was too young to make a decision for myself. My parents came to this country because of my, because of their relatives. My, my grandfather, grandparents are the citizens of America and they wanted to live with us. Just like everybody else, my family applied to extend our visa, but we hired a lawyer, lawyer but he committed fraud against my family. For two years, he did not inform us that our visa was rejected. He did and kept on asking for the money. And when we were informed that our visa was rejected, we already stayed in the United States for too long and there was no way, no other way to retrieve our status. When I was young, my parents did not let me know the whole situation that we are in. They only want me to focus on following my dream. I studied hard and made every effort to be succeed. By the time that I graduated high school, I was accepted by one of the best colleges in my field. And from that point, I started realizing, started realizing the seriousness of my undocumented status. Firstly, I was informed that I was not eligible for any financial aids, loans, grants, or even most of the scholarships. Although it was an impossible amount of money for my family to afford, they decided to help uh, support me as, well, as I was pursuing my dream. My family had to work awfully many hours to just help pay my tuition. My sister, who is only a year older than me, gave up going to college and helped me out as well. For myself, I had to work two to three part-time jobs as I was enro enrolling full-time in a school. Now that I have graduated, the financial difficulty is not as severe as before, yet the problem of undocumented status still remains. I grew up in this country. I speak the language. I, edu I was educated here. I have a degree that's appropriate working here, yet there's no chance for me to contribute back to the society. I wish I could drive to go somewhere I need to be. I want to work somewhere my ability can be maximized. And then I also want to study abro further abroad without worrying about being separated from my family. I really want to live up to my full potential in this land where I believe is my home to live. As I was volunteered for KRCC, I got to meet many youths just like me. So I'm very glad I can speak on behalf of this Asian community because the immigration issue is not only about Latino, Latino community. This is about every possible ethnic group that any American can think of. And this is a problem that this whole America is facing altogether. And um, especially this year, I'm really desperately waiting for good news to be heard. Thank you. Asian Pacific Americans have much at stake during the current immigration debate. Karen Narasaki, President and Executive Director of the Asian American Justice Center, will be speaking about the urgent need for our community's perspective at this most decisive moment. Thank you. Uh, I'm President of the Asian American Justice Center, which is a civil and human rights organization based here in Washington, and we're proud to be one of the conveners of this historic gathering. And we particularly want to applaud the leadership and vision of Unsuk Lee of Nakasek, who launched this idea. Yeah. Our affiliates, the Asian Pacific American Legal Center from Los Angeles and the Asian American Institute in Chicago are among the hundreds of Asian Pacific Americans who have come to the Capitol over these past days. 
They've come to share their vision of how our country could be even stronger if Congress and the President choose the right path for fixing our broken immigration system. Congress and the White House have acted as if the debate is only about immigrants from Mexico. However, the outcome of this debate will have as much an impact on immigrants from Asia and indeed Americans throughout the country. More than one and a half million are in the family backlog, waiting sometimes 23 years to be able to, able to see their brother and sister. Over a million are undocumented, and you heard just today the pain that causes for people who really love this country and have adopted this as their home. We agree with President Bush that at the heart of America's strength is our commitment to strong values of family. One of the problems with the current system is that it doesn't realistically reflect the importance of family and is leading to these long, unhealthy separations. We're concerned that what is reported to be the White House proposals fails to, in fact, honor those values. Instead of creating a system that results in more realistic um, visas, it effectively eliminates the ability of families to petition for their parents, their children, just because they turn 21, and their siblings. It would fail to fully address the backlog and would not allow immigrants learning, earning legal status or future immigrants coming in as needed workers to bring even their spouses and children with them. This undermines the role that families play in helping newcomers to integrate quickly into our communities. It would lead to a large number of immigrants unable to fully commit to becoming American because of the uncertainty of being able to build a home without the support of their loved ones. Indeed, it would necessitate the continued outflow of earnings overseas rather than the investment of those earnings in communities here in America. Family members help each other learn about the American culture, find jobs, build businesses, buy homes, and send their children to college, as you heard. They provide a safety net for each other. The White House proposal does not address the reality of these strong ties and if ignored, this reality as well as workers and entrepreneurs and as new Americans. We join with other Americans in seeking to urge Congress and the White House to repair our immigration system this year with a comprehensive immigration reform bill that serves our nation and our communities well. We want comprehensive immigration reform now. Those of you who have banners, I see that Apala from New York has arrived. Please join us here in the front. Woo! Welcome from New York. And San Francisco. And San Francisco. Welcome, Apala. Currently, there are 2,100 Cambodian Americans who came as refugees into this country now facing deportation because of unintended consequences of successive immigration laws. Manny Uke is one of them currently awaiting deportation. He joins us here from Seattle, Washington. Okay, Lua. <coughs> so, um, my name is Manny Uch. I reside in Seattle, Washington. I am one of 2,100 Cambodians American that are currently on the gov government's list for deportation back to Cambodia. I came to the U.S. as a refugee from the killing fields of Cambodia when I was a young child. I have no memory of Cambodia. My first memory is of struggling in the Thailand refugee camps. My, fa my, my parents were separated in a Vietnamese occupation and I was raised by my mother in a housing project in Seattle. Like many other Cambodians refugees, I was surrounded by crimes growing up and many of my friends dropped out of school. In 1994, as a teenager, I made a mistake. I was convicted of robbery in the first degree. I was also found deportable by an immigration judge and ordered deported to Cambodia, a country that I have no memory of. Because of immigration law passed by Congress in 1996 requiring legal permanent resident alien to remain in detention until deported, and because Cambodian was not accepting the deportees back, at the time of my release from prison in 1997, I was taken into INS custody without a release date for two and a half years. This was after I had already served my sentence. At the time, the government couldn't release me and couldn't send me back. I was stuck indefinitely until I was paroled after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that long-term permanent resident alien could not be detained indefinitely if 
if the country would not take them back. However, the U.S. eventually signed a treaty with Cambodia allowing for deportation and this means that I could be deported at any time. I am still in limbo and my future is uncertain. It's hard for me to make any kind of decision because I am on the list for deportation. I don't know when it will be, all I know that I'm on the list. I can't make any future plans beyond a year because I don't know where I'll be a year or five years from now. I'm currently working and have a stable job. Since my release from custody, I have been doing well, better than I expected myself to do. I came out of prison a better person than I went in. However, no matter how well I do, I will still face deportation because of my past mistake. My only mistake was not knowing better as a teenager. My mother's mistake was not becoming a U.S. citizen when I was young because she wasn't educated enough to pass the citizen test. Though she is a citizen now, it will not change my deportation status in the uncertain future. I have a daughter now, but it's all come to an abrupt end when the thought of my having to leave her behind because my name would be called to leave this country and leave everything that I wanted so much behind. As Congress debate, debates immigration reform, restoring relief to people impacted by detention and deportation is critical. We need Congress to enact comprehensive immigration reform now. Thank you. Um, the, our, this movement for immigration reform has many faces and represents the coming together of diverse sectors that believe that America needs immigration reform to be just and faith, uh, humane. And that includes the faith community. To share his insights is our final speaker, Eun Sang Lee, a uh, reverend from the Warren United Methodist Church of Denver, Colorado. As a clergy person, I would say to be spiritual is to love everyone. When you truly embrace the diversity, you embrace God. No human being is illegal. Diversity is not a thing to be tolerated, but a thing to be embraced as a gift from God. I can be only fully I because of you. There is no us and them. So in Denver, about 30 faith communities of uh, Christian, Buddhist, uh, Islam, and Jewish came together to, uh, to fund a uh, little it's a startup organization called El Centro Humanitario. Because uh, once an uh, employer picked up a day labor of, uh, from uh, south of the border, and uh, so we are talking about the spirit of the future of this country where every life is being honored by the creation of God and, and where equal uh, humanity is guaranteed, equal justice is guaranteed for everybody. Indeed, we are building the future of America together. Everybody is in it but we are fighting against some nasty spirit these days. Spirit that's represented by the Minuteman. The Minuteman, uh, 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 one, one morning, uh, uh, camped outside. They, they picketed El Centro Humanitario. We are fighting the spirit of Tom Tancredo, the infamous uh, congressperson from Colorado. We are fighting against the spirit that calls this, this, this asking for justice, amnesty, chain, that, that, that the spirit that, that uses terms like chain immigration. So in the end, it is about what kind of America we're going to have. Dr. King said, injustice done to any part of humanity, and if any one of the human community is done to all of us. 
So it is about the soul of, of our country. Uh, there is a little saying uh, inside the church uh, that I serve, a small saying that goes like this. There isn't enough darkness in all the world to put out the light from one small candle. We are not just like talking about one small candle. We are talking about flame. We are talking about torch. We have a wildfire started long time ago get that continues going on here today. So, amen to that. We have two more speakers. Uh, I'm sorry. I uh, I wanted to first acknowledge, because we did do roll call yesterday, but we had three buses that arrived from New York that included the Young Korean American Service and Education Center, uh, OCA New York, and Apala, the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance. Once again, let's welcome uh, our friends from New York. Family sponsorship is a key way immigrants from Asia enter the United States. A major impetus for this two-day unprecedented mobilization of Asian Pacific Americans to Washington, D.C. is because of the growing concern that Congress and the White House may negatively destroy today's family-based sponsorship program as we know it. Michael Lin, our next speaker, will address the importance of the family-based immigration program. I want to thank you, Winston Lee, for her leadership. It has been a very expi inspiring experience working with her during the last few months <laughs> and with all of you. Today, we, the Asian American community, coming from across the nation, are here to make a statement. A statement to demand a fair, humane, comprehensive immigration reform. Yes, we need a more secure border. Yes, we need a pragmatic approach to millions of undocumented immigrants. However, most important of all, we need a reform of the family reunification that respects family value. As you know, family-based immigration is widely used in Asian American community to bring out a strong family, provides a nurturing, productive environment for every member of the family. It's unthinkable that parents have to wait for years before they can reunite with their children. Our part of American life, if we cannot bring our family together, this nation promises us that if we wait lawfully in time, we'll be able to reunite with members of our immediate family this is a promise which cannot be broken. And these are our rights as American, and which is not negotiable. So my sister and brothers, we have a lot of work to do. Go to your Congress members and your senators, tell them that we want a fair family-based immigration without backlog. We will remember them at the next election where they stand. We deserve an immigration policy which reflects our family value and treat us with dignity and fairness. So ladies and gentlemen, today we together have taken a big step to demand our rights. We are going to build America's future together. So thank you very much. speaker is a representative from San Jose who actually represents all of us. It's Mike Conda from, who's the chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus and he will be joining us as our final speaker. Please welcome him warmly. Thank you. Please welcome warmly. It is warm, isn't it? Well, welcome. And it's good to see so many faces like this one. I understand you guys are going to the uh, different offices you already had started this morning. Is that right? Good. Now, <laughs> there's that 
is that most stereotyped Asians are quiet. Now we're, we're not going to be quiet about this, are we? Good. Thank you so much. On behalf of all the folks that have spoken already, young people who are citizens, whose parents are not, young people who are not citizens and came here because their parents are not, and they're being um, under a lot of pressure to, through no fault of their own. This kind of immigration reform bill is going to take care of all that. And uh, I just want to let you know that uh, you're doing the right thing. What you're doing is going office to office with, a, with an issue, and you're putting your face to that issue, and then you're putting your face and your issue in the face of someone else who's going to make a vote. Okay? <laughs> you got my face, baby. <laughs> you got my face and then more. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of things I just want to let you know. This is important work. And it's serious work because we're talking about our lives, our past generations, our present generation, our future generations. We also have to understand that we're not just the only ones here. We're representing over 12 million people. 12 million people, okay? And that's, they're not necessarily only Asian Americans because we're in it together, we're in the same boat. You put a hole in the front part of the boat, the boat sinks. So we're gonna be plugging up all these holes and making sure that our legislators listen to us. November 6th, November 7th, they heard the message. It was about immigration, it was about Iraqi. Today, it's about immigration. Today, it's about you. Today, it's about our families and the families we want to reunify with. So, we have great legislators here. We have great colleagues and allies who want to do the right thing. There are those who still need education. So, this is what you're all about. So, it's, you're really going to help us get this bill through and we'll put this in front of um, the man who lives at in the White House. I think that he may, he may sign it. He says he wants to see something. He really needs something for a legacy. And this will be a good one for him to have. But it's the one that we're gonna shape that says the Dream Act is gonna be real, that we're gonna take care of our people. We're gonna make sure that people are in line for legalization. We're gonna make sure that we're gonna have no backlogs. We're gonna reunite our families. And we're gonna make sure that those of us who've been waiting for a long time get to see our family members. So thank you for doing this. Thank you very much for taking the time and making America really work. Show your face. Let them know that we're Thank you again. This concludes the former part of the press conference. For those of you who are speakers, uh, along with other spokespersons, the media table is over to my left, and please go over there for interviews. Um, there is media waiting there, and uh, we're going to start now by, um, in, I guess the rally will start from now on uh, in a few minutes, so thank you again for joining us.
My partner said earlier, this is a beautiful day. Do you know why it's a beautiful day? Because Mother Nature is with us. And you know what that means, right? When Mother Nature is with us, she will not divide families. All right, we would like to recognize the organizations that put this together, the national Asian Pacific American organizations that really made this possible. They are the Asian American Justice Center, Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, Japanese American Citizens League, Korean American Resource and Culture Center, Korean Resource Center, National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum, National Coalition for Asian Pacific American Community Development, National Federation of Filipino American Associations, National Korean American Service and Education Consortium. The Organization of Chinese Americans. South Asian American Leaders of Tomorrow. Southeast Asia Resource Action Center. And ICASEC, Empowering the Korean American Community. Let's give them a big hand. event has brought together over 300 participants from 25 states and several more hundred from the DC, Maryland, and Virginia areas. We are students, workers, parents, community members, people of faith, registered voters, and much more. And we care about the future of our communities and this country. We we appreciate the commitment to just and humane comprehensive immigration reform that everyone here today is showing. As Asian Americans, we bring a strong and significant voice to the immigrant rights movement. May 1st, or May Day, became famous because thousands of immigrant workers demonstrated for our rights years ago. Today, we honor this tradition by coming together here to demonstrate that the fight for justice for all continues on. Also significant, today is the first day of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And we're here today because immigration reform is one of the most important policy issues that Congress and the White House will decide on this year. Today's immigration system is dysfunctional. You hear that? It is dysfunctional and unworkable with 12 million undocumented immigrants working and living in the shadows. And you know, 1.5 million of whom are Asian Pacific American. Millions more are caught in the family immigration backlogs, waiting sometimes decades to reunite with family members. And as many of us know, sometimes that wait is too long. Now, employers unable to meet growing labor demands, leading to exploitation of immigrant workers. United Methodist Church from Denver, Colorado. 
Reverend Unsung Lee, Pastor of Warren United Methodist Church, also from Denver, Colorado. Reverend Norman Fong from the Chinatown D CDC in San Francisco. Father Vien Nguyen from Queen Mary of Vietnam Catholic Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, and Jin and Park from Wan Buddhism of New York City. Each religious leader will say a few words. Good afternoon. I would like to introduce a passage from the Bible uh, for all the Christians here. It's from Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. 1 through 3. Now the, uh, now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the faith shall be blessed. So to me, the Christian, the spiritual immigrant, the father of the immigration for Christians is Abraham. And Abraham was not a problem. Abraham was a source of a blessing. So we are not the problems of America. We are the blessing of, the, uh, of America. So until, until God blesses us with this world that God promised as a source of a blessing, not as a source of a problem, the government really uh, hits us. And may God bless with our uh, bless you and be with you. Amen. And also Christian Bible over and over uh, again talks about the future of the community depends on how the community treats the most vulnerable, most powerless, most voiceless in its midst. Protect the uh, widow, protect the orphans, protect the uh, strangers in your midst. Over and over again, Bible emphasizes, and this is just one example from uh, Prophet Isaiah. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin. Is it not the fast I choose to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking out of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and set You know, there are millions of workers that we're going to need in this country. And if we're going to end immigration as we know it today, an unfair and unjust system, then we must have a way to bring immigrants to this country, to bring them here. And so what is critical and necessary is that we include the 400,000 new visas each and every year to bring and continue to nurture and strengthen our economy. An end to guest worker programs and yes to a new worker program where they can come and earn their American citizenship just like immigrants have done in the past. And we can do that, but we need to do it together. We need to make sure that comprehensive immigration reform is comprehensive immigration reform. That it ends the raids on the part of the federal government in our community and gives people the right to say, here's my ID, I got it from the federal government, leave me alone, I'm hardworking, I'm sweating, I'm fighting, I'm working hard to make America a better place for all of us. And so, that debate is important. 
and how we organize that debate. Because we are strong, but we must never underestimate our enemies. There are those who will use hatred and bigotry and prejudice to derail this movement. We will not be confused. We will not be dissuaded. We will not be derailed until we get immigration reform that allows all of those that are our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, those that we go to church with, those that we go to school with, those that we go to work with, to be able to legalize their status finally here in the United States of America. And then we can call an end to the raids. And then we can call yes to a new sanity about our immigration system. An immigration system that says we respect the hard work, the sweat, the toil, and the contribution, and that America is strengthened America is made stronger. America is made more viable. America is made more democratic because of immigrants and their contribution. And so today I want to say to all of my friends and all of my brothers and sisters from the Asian community, I'm excited that you raise your voice. That you raise your voice as a community of people. And whether you're from Asia, or whether you're from Africa, whether you're from Latin America, or any other part of the world. If you've come here to work hard, if you've come here to sweat and toil, if you're of good moral character, let's make sure this government respects your contribution and allows you to legalize your status here in the United States. And so, I'm gonna take the prerogative. Yo iba a hablar unas palabras en español. I was gonna speak a few sentences in Spanish because if I spoke some, if I spoke a few sentences in Spanish then the next speaker could translate them because that's how uh, that's how we're getting in the Congress of the United States right I have to I have to learn more than two languages he understands more than two languages so let me introduce to you déjame presentarle déjame presentarle mi amigo let me introduce to you my friend a uh, un colega en el Congreso, a colleague in the Congress of the United States, que ha sido un luchador que no se le puede poner valor. A fighter that you just cannot put a value on. And somebody who is going to work tirelessly, has worked, will continue to work, and when we get comprehensive immigration reform, is going to be shown as being one of the leaders of this movement. The Congressman from San Jose, California, y mi amigo en español, Mike Honda. Gutierrez. Luis Gutierrez. Si se puede. Si se puede. Juntos venceremos. Together we will overcome. So you, you see the kind of folks that are working on your behalf. You know, Hillary, Luis, myself, all of you. Immigration reform, the kinds, the parts that we care about, family reunification, the elimination of backlogs, you know, those are important to our communities. Aside, including making sure that those who are here undocumented without papers also take the road towards legalization. They would use immigration to separate us. They would use immigration to drive wages between our communities. And we're not gonna let them do that, are we? Absolutely not. Asian Americans, we're not quiet Americans. No. Asian Americans, we come from countries where we protest and we get involved in politics and we have leaders to tell us what to do and we tell them what to do too. It's no different here. Our history is different. It may be molded us differently. But today, America, make no mistake, the Americans here today are here to stay. We're gonna fight for our rights, we're gonna fight for our, our families, we're gonna make sure that the immigration reform is a just one. We, we have stories to tell. We have stories to tell along with our brothers from the South and from the Caribbeans and the other parts of this world like Louis said. We have stories to tell. We have stories to tell like a veteran, a Filipino veteran who became a naturalized citizen back in 1992 and then filed to have 
his family come over to reunite with him, his kids, his sons. Today, 2007, 15 years later, he's still waiting. That is not right. And those are the kinds of things that we want to see happen also for all groups. But we want to make sure that Asian Americans are counted. And so to be counted, we have to be stepping up. To be heard, we have to speak up. And to be, and also to be included, we have to make sure that we're in these offices putting our faces on the issues that we want them to vote upon and tell them, ask them, how are you going to vote on immigration reform? Will you support the bill that Luis Gutierrez is working hard on? And don't leave until they give you an answer. Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you do that? We call that closing. You go there, you say, how do you do? My name is such and such. And we're here to talk about immigration reform. This is what we care about. And this is the bill we want to see pass. It's not perfect, but it's what we can live with. It's something that Luis and other people are hammering out. Will you support this bill? And then you sit there quietly, don't say a word, because that's what we call in teaching, wait time. We wait. And pretty soon they're gonna jiggle around and everything. And you're gonna want to say something, but you keep quiet and you just wait till they say yes or no. If they say yes, you put a smile on your face and say, thank you, we'll remember you. If they say no, you say, thank you, we'll remember you. Because November 7th, we remembered. And so we have to remember that you are the citizens, you're the ones who vote, you're the one that put us in office, you're the one who can make the difference, and you make sure that those folks in the office, like me, do the right thing. For not only for ourselves, but for our children, and for our grandchildren, for the future. To make America, what we say in the preamble of the United States Constitution, to form a more perfect union, and to include all of us who are Americans. And some of us are Americans in waiting, but make no mistake, we will all contribute. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your help. Thank you very much, Congressman Honda. What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Now we also want families united should never be defeated. Everybody. Families united should never be defeated. Families united should never be defeated. Families united should never be defeated. Let those loud voices rock this capital so that they will not keep our families separated. Before, we, before I call on our next speaker, let me just acknowledge in the house or in this park, Students and faculty and staff from the University of Maryland Asian American Studies Program. All right. You know, brothers and sisters, the kind of immigration reform our communities need and want will only be achieved if we educate and organize our communities. A key national organization that strives to bring diverse based building organizations together to realize the changes we need in our immigration system is Deepak Bhargava. Deepak is the executive director of the Center for Community Change, and we welcome her to share a few words with us today. Let's give a big welcome to Deepak. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful day to be doing the beautiful work of social justice in America, right? Powerful. We are powerful. We are watching. We are watching. We will be voting. We will be voting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Deepak. You know, as you, as you look around in this park and all the faces that you see smiling and ready to go, we have black, brown, red, yellow, white. We are the face of America. And again, in the house today, 
are our friends from the Latino American supporters of our community, right here. Let's give it a big hand. Thank you. Thank you for your support. You know, we've heard from the White House, Congress, and the media that our immigration system has not been working for a long time. What we do not hear enough is about how the immigration system is failing our young people. Now, all of us are young people, right? We are all young people. Now, Connie Yoon is, Yoon is an incredibly gifted young artist currently who recently graduated from one of the top art institutions in the country. She immigrated to the United States from Korea as a teenager and began working in her family's dry cleaner business in order to support her family. Despite language barriers, Kenny studied hard and won numerous honors from her school. When she turned 18, she faced the harsh limitations of being undocumented, which included difficulty in attending and financing her education and now finding work. Despite these hardships, she still perseveres. Sorry, sorry. What? She had to go to another, she's an activist going to another meeting, so she had to go. So we're gonna move along. All right, just imagine that Canyon was here. She was with us in spirit. And she will always be with us. Because even if she's here personally, she's with us heart, mind, and soul. All right, the overarching message of this mobilization is building America's future together because it captures our belief that the immigration reform we seek will benefit all of us whether we are immigrants or not. Joining us from New York, an important immigrant leader in our community who is representing the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium and its New York Center, Waikasek Empowering the Korean American Community, is Sungjin S.J. Jung. Please join me in welcoming him. Hello, everyone. Hello, America. Are you excited? Come on, let me hear from you louder. Are you excited? I am so inspired today to see you all here today. It reminds me of the energy and momentum that we created last year. You remember last year? Millions of people poured onto the street. It was a sea of justice calling for immigration reform. Do you also remember what we shouted together last year? Do you remember that? We are not criminals. We are not terrorists. We are immigrants and together we are America. Together we are America. That's what we shouted together. What a powerful rallying cry it was. We are America. We should be very proud of ourselves. Last year, we were able to defeat one of the most anti-immigrant legislation ever called Sensen Brenner King Bill. Let's give ourselves a thunderous round of applause. <laughs> we were not able to push immigration reform all the way through. Unfortunately, we were winning on the street, but losing in the halls of Congress. That is why we are gathered here today. We are gathered here today to make a statement, to make a statement to the White House, to make a statement to the Congress, to make a statement to our nation. Is that right? <laughs> What is our statement? Our statement is that, let us build America's future together. To do that, we need immigration reform now. That is our statement. Then, why, why do we want immigration reform? First of all, the sweat, blood, and tears of immigrants should be respected and recognized. Immigrants do not deserve to be criminalized and scapegoated. Immigrants deserve an immigration system that works, that is humane, and that is fair, that is rational. Is that right? <laughs> but immigration reform is not something that is only good for immigrants. You know what? It benefits America. It benefits America 
the most. Do you want America to be economically prosperous? Do you want America to be more secure? Then you should support immigration reform. You should support immigration reform. After all, immigration reform and immigration issues are not just about how immigrants should be treated in this country. In fact, it is really about what kind of America we want to build. It is really about keeping America on the right track. It is really about building America's future together. Are you with me? Yeah. Let me briefly talk about so-called White House proposal. Now, we all know the White House has been negotiating with some key members of Congress to come up with its own proposal on immigration reform. Sisters and brothers, so-called White House proposal, it is dangerous, very dangerous, and it is wrong. You know what? White House proposal, it will not just do away with family-based immigration system, but it will implement guest worker program. You know what that means? That means this guest worker program will create permanently temporary workers. It will create unwelcome underclass in this society. This is no good. This is bad, very bad for immigrants, and this is bad for all Americans. Once implemented, guest worker program will be a funeral ceremony it will be a funeral ceremony for workers' rights, civil rights, and human rights as we know it. This is no American dream. This is American nightmare. Guess Walker program is American nightmare. So we urge all members of Congress to stop negotiating with White House and stick to what is good for America's future? Do you support that? Yeah! America is at a critical, critical crossroads over immigration issues. At this critical juncture, we should not let the tunnel vision of anti-immigrant forces determine America's future. You know what? The tunnel vision of anti-immigrant forces promotes nothing but hate politics and it will eventually tear this country apart so the question is who's going to keep america from falling apart who's going to keep america at its best and who's going to keep our american dream alive at this critical juncture let america's future be determined by us, by our American dream, the real American dream, by our grand vision. <laughs> to do that, to do that, America needs immigration reform now. Remember, remember, immigrants, daughters and sons of immigrants and grandchildren of immigrants and Latinos, African Americans, and Asian Pacific Americans, and Native Americans, together we are America, and all together we build America's future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Shengjin. Uh, I forgot to mention earlier when I introduced our Latino supporters who are here with us today that they are from Casa de Maryland. Let me now introduce our next speaker who is here today. Kyo Che came to this country in 1981 as a baby with her mother, older sister and older brother who was four at the time. On his 18th birthday, her brother was arrested for crimes he committed as a kid. The family was given bad advice by the lawyer, and her brother was sentenced to the state penitentiary. While in prison, her brother tutored other incarcerated individuals 
and received a scholarship to attend San Francisco State University. Unfortunately, he was never given this opportunity. Immediately upon his release, immigration officials detained him in lieu of deportation to Cambodia. For the next three years, Kiyo's family lived in a state of limbo, not knowing whether her brother would be deported or spend the rest of his life in detention. In August 2004, her brother was deported to the country they fled from 20 years earlier. Brothers and sisters, please join me in welcoming Kiyo. Good afternoon. My name is Heo Chia, and I came here in 1981. We were political refugees from Cambodia, and we were welcomed to this country to start a new life after the U.S. left our country in a, in a war-torn state after the Vietnam War. We came here thinking we had new hope for a promise for a better tomorrow. But when my brother was 17, he committed a mistake that he would regret for the rest of his life. He had the choice to be tried as an adult, but due to bad advice by our lawyer, my brother was tried as an adult. Because of his adult um, sentence, he received an adult conviction and was therefore subject to immigration consequences. Not until two months before his release, we found out that he could be deported. This was the first time my family had ever heard of deportation. We were shocked. We didn't know what to do. Immediately upon his release, immigration officials picked my brother up from jail. He never came home. He was a free man who completed his sentence, and yet they would not let him come home. He spent the next three years in immigration detention, and every single month for three years, immigration officials told my brother that he was going to be deported the next month, and every single month he was not deported. Then immigration officials promised my brother that Cambodia would never accept deportees, and they convinced him to sign a deportation order because he would never be deported to Cambodia, they said. Two months later, Cambodia signed an agreement, and now my brother was to be deported to Cambodia. However, it took them three years to finally deport my brother to Cambodia. Our life, our family has been torn apart by the immigration laws and the, the lack of justice in this country that we came here believing in. I urge you to return to your communities, to educate each other, that de these deportation laws and these immigration policies are breaking families apart. They are tearing apart families who belong and deserve to be together. My brother was never given a second chance for a mistake he made as a child, as a kid. Our family was never given another chance to be one again. Everybody deserves a second chance, and all immigrants deserve due process. We deserve a fair day in court, and all families deserve to be together. Comprehensive, sorry, comprehensive immigration reform now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chea, for sharing that story with us. Let's give her another hand of reminding us why we're here. I would now like to introduce Bobby Khan of the Coney Island Avenue Project. Mr. Khan's sophisticated organizing. And we must all go up! People, my people, Asian Pacific Americans, oh, we must legalize now! Yeah! Families united should never be divided! Yeah! Stop the rage! Yeah! What do we want, Dream Act? Yeah! What Yeah! <laughs> 
Americans are quiet again. So, as we close, I just want to say that, make an announcement that NACASAC members should join NCIC members to go to the DNC and RNC action. They should meet to my left. Look for the NCIC members. They'll be wearing the orange hats if you're going to that. We just want to thank all our speakers for coming out here today. Thank you all, especially you all, for coming out here today on May Day, on the first day of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, because it's really all of us together that's going to make comprehensive immigration reform that is just and humane for our communities happen. So keep the energy, keep the spirit. Let's go out there and make it happen. Thank you.